So in the previous lectures we started with uh, understanding uh, physical work environment and in that category we discussed about, uh, about the effect of noise on the human performance. So we discussed about uh, various uh, uh, factors that uh, uh, are responsible uh, for noise and uh, the fundamentals uh, regarding uh, the sound intensity. So uh, in continuation with that uh, we will try to cover in this lecture uh, the noise control and noise factors and effects the summary of that. So first of all noise factors and their effects. So uh, basically the noise factors of primary concern, the two noise factors of primary concern in the terms of their effects on human workers is that the intensity of the noise and duration of the exposure. As far as other noise factors of interest, this frequency that is perceived by listeners as pitch and uh, industrial noise is usually a broadband composed of wide range of frequencies so it is important and is demonized. Non-continuous noise, there are intermittent noise, machines with on off cycle, impact noise just like in manufacturing industry uh, drop a forge hammer and in impulse noise in a gunfire uh, industries. So these are the uh, some of the examples through which you can uh, have an idea of non-continuous noise and still it makes a large impact on the workers that are uh, that are working in the surrounding. As far as uh, physiological effect of noise is concerned, so when a person is exposed to a, a sudden loud noise, it is like an impact. So uh, that impulse noise is known as uh, basically uh, this uh, the re reaction is known as a startle response. So when a person is uh, exposed to sudden loud, loud noise, the reaction is known as a startle response which causes a spontaneous muscle contractions or blinking eyes or closing of the eye and head jerk movement. So that are the reaction when sudden uh, noise uh, comes to you and your response uh, appears in the form of blinking of eye or sudden eye closing and or uh, your sudden head jerk movement. Other uh, physiological effect uh, that uh, you can experience like uh, slower and heavier breathing, variation in heartbeat rate and uh, the dilation of eye pupils. So this startle response cause uh, this particular startle response causes distraction and disruption of a person's current activity and although its physiological effects are transient and uh, in a very momentarily in nature it can elicit annoyance and other negative, uh, uh, negative reactions you can say or negative emotions as well. So of particular concern in ergonomics the hearing loss due to noise is very much uh, important and serious factor. So like sudden blast happens and uh, that uh, uh, the sound intensity while passing through the auditory channel in your ear and uh, uh, sudden it may distort, uh, it may damage your eardrum. So that hearing loss can be categorized into three uh, points. The first point is the temporary threshold shift it is a, a hearing impairment of short duration, noise induced permanent threshold shift. It basically it results from long term exposure to noise levels above uh, 90 decibel and uh, third is acoustic trauma. So this acoustic trauma is a single exposure uh, to high intensity noise which can cause temporary or permanent hearing loss. So in that case, so uh, 
uh, av abbreviation of these things like uh, if we could uh, write in a short form. So, temporary threshold shift can be uh, write, uh, written as TTS. This particular noise induced permanent threshold shift can be uh, written as NIPTS and this uh, particular acoustic trauma can be written as AT. So, this is just for uh, uh, pronunciation. So, now this particular noise induced permanent threshold shift that is NIPTS, this is a hearing loss that is not reversible. Uh, full hearing is never recovered. This NIPTS, it results from long term exposure. noise levels above 90 decibel. So, the damage uh, takes place, so the damage mostly takes place in cochlea of inner ear which contains uh, this cochlea of the inner ear as we studied. So, uh, basically uh, in that uh, this particular damage is in cochlea of the inner cell. This cochlea is uh, uh, having a microscopic auditory hair cells and uh, high intensity noise exposure over the extended period of time destroys these sensory cells. So, the net effect this NIPTS, so the net effect of permanent damage is a threshold shift expressed in which is expressed in decibels. So, NIPTS that does not imply complete deafness, it means a reduction in auditory capability. So, this particular NIPTS means a reduction in auditory capability. So, this is not a permanent uh, uh, deafness, it is just a reduction in auditory capability and amount of hearing loss is depending on the intensity level and it varies among individuals. The third kind of uh, hearing loss is acoustic trauma. So, this is caused by just single exposure to high intensity uh, noise of short duration and uh, depending on the intensity of the noise, the hearing loss can be temporary or permanent. So, now uh, we come to the next topic that is permissible noise level uh, that uh, this levels basically uh, one agency is there whose name is OSHA O S H A which is uh, uh, meaning uh, in meaning uh, its uh, full form is uh, occupational safety and health administration uh, which uh, those noise level standards the set by this particular agency and it is designed to avoid the hearing loss effects that uh, we discussed uh, uh, some time before. So, the standards specify the permissible uh, duration of exposure for each of various sound pressure levels using DBA scale. A partial listing of uh, uh, the standards is shown here. So, here we can see that there are various sound level values, its duration, sound levels and its duration. So, there are basically this particular table is like that. So, here we can see that a continuous sound pressure level of 80 uh, dBA 
is acceptable and requires no abatement steps. A value of uh, 85 uh, uh, decibel uh, is customarily used as a threshold level, uh, threshold level at which employees should begin to take action to control the noise. A sound pressure level of 90 decibel must be limited to 8 hours of exposure and uh, any level uh, above 90 means that noise abatement procedures of some kind are required. So, for uh, sound pressure levels uh, that are not given in this particular table, so the permissible duration of exposure for a given sound level can be calculated by, so uh, this particular uh, permissible duration of exposure can be uh, calculated by uh, this one formula says T P D A 8 upon 2 to the power 0 0.2 S P L minus 90, where this T P D E is permissible duration of exposure that is expressed in hour. SPL is the sound pressure level that is expressed in DBA. So, it is uh, not uncommon for a worker uh, to be uh, simultaneously exposed uh, of these sources. Expressed as an equivalent uh, sound pressure level uh, can be obtained by the following equation that I am writing here that SPL equals to 10 log base 10 summation of I 10 to the power 0 0.1 times SPL and this is I. So, here we can say that this SPL in uh, as a total is a total sound pressure level of multiple noise sources. It is total in fact TOT we can uh, say right here SPL TOT is total sound pressure level of multiple noise sources that is expressed in dBA and this SPL I equals to sound pressure level of noise source I that is expressed in dBA where I is uh, subscript to distinguish different sources so uh, we are going to start uh, with the uh, next topic that is noise control so here uh, like uh, another common situation is for workers to be exposed to uh, several uh, different noise sources uh, for a different duration throughout a given uh, work day. So, combined effect of uh, different sound intensities can be summarized as a noise dose. So, another factor that I am giving here as a noise dose which is nothing but percentage value. Uh, that combines several uh, several noise components uh, into one measure.
such that uh, any value above 100 percent exceeds the OSHA permissible limit. So, this particular noise dose value that is less than or equal to 100 is acceptable. So, in fact, this noise dose value can be calculated as noise dose uh, value can be calculated as uh, if you can uh, write it as a ND that is 100 uh, summation of T E X J upon T P D E J where this N D is the noise dose this uh, uh, T X J is exposure time. Uh, this exposure time uh, exp uh, at a given sound pressure level and like a uh, during period, period has to be defined during some period let us say uh, j hour and this T P D A J is uh, this T P D E J equals to uh, that is uh, basically uh, permissible uh, duration uh, of exposure at a given sound pressure level. So, here uh, you can just defined as uh, basically uh, permissible duration of exposure at a at a given time at a given uh, at a given sound pressure level uh, in hours. So, and the summation is carried out uh, over all period during the shift. So, this summation is used for that. So, uh, in this way noise dose can be calculated. So, so now uh, we can uh, now explain this noise control because the fundamentals has been covered. So, now uh, just uh, uh, given the existence of a noise problem uh, in a particular facility. So, there are uh, uh, there, there can be two general approaches uh, which can be persuaded to address this problem. So, first is administrative control and second is engineering control. So, in that uh, so because there are two ways uh, to control uh, in any organization that particular uh, noise level. So, if it is uh, some technical uh, faults are uh, there in the in, in any system which is which is responsible for creating noise. So, the engineers will take care of that if it is something beyond technical. So, administrative will help uh, in uh, uh, in reducing the uh, excessive noise level thereby creating the ergonomic uh, uh, system. So, here uh, the administrative control to avoid hearing damage. So, this basically administrative controls are directed at managing the exposure duration for employees working in noisy environment. So, uh, administrative control are directed at managing the exposure duration that exposure duration we can uh, this exposure duration is T E X J for employees working in noisy environment by scheduling the exposure time to achieve a total no noise dose less than 100 percent. So, the uh, scheduling involves balancing the time spent in noise uh, environment against offsetting times spent in quiet environment. So, another form of administrative control involves education and training of workers, uh, uh, which is uh, the training will be about uh, uh, making them aware of the potential hazards. Uh, of uh, intense noise and uh, importance of uh, using the engineering control that uh, have been installed for noise abatement. 
So, the importance of uh, administrative noise control must not be uh, minimized. It is generally uh, agreed that more desirable and potentially uh, more effective approach is through engineering control. So, uh, here we can see that uh, noise abatement at three locations, we can uh, think of the source receiver and path between source and receiver. So, the as far as this engineering control is concerned, it involves various techniques and ways that can be implemented to reduce the noise intensity level in the work environment. So, uh, basically there are three regions where the noise level can be think of, uh, can be thought of uh, to reduce. Uh, so, first at the at the point of source, second at the region of uh, receiver and uh, third is the path between the source and receiver. So, uh, in this way like if this is source and this is the path and this is the receiver. So, source path receiver viewpoint in the design of engineering control for noise abatement. So, noise uh, control at the source uh, involves the redesigning of the machine redesigning of the machine or process that generates the noise. So, reducing the noise level emanating from the source is usually the most effective approach to abatement, but also it is usually the most difficult and one of the most expensive approach because the machine installation is a very uh, expensive uh, thing and if you are uh, thinking to redesign or uh, the si uh, system and process, so the, it will cost too much. So, that is why it is very much expensive approach. So, the machine or process has been designed to accomplish a given function. So, if a noise is coming, it means that uh, uh, noise is also will be noise will also be responsible for wear and tear of that particular machine. Example of inherently noisy machine include uh, like jack hammers, forge hammers, stamping presses where now noise level is too high. So, it is difficult to design these machines for uh, quicker operation without impairing their productivity. So, in this case uh, it is when the uh, when the interaction between the tool and workpiece is taking place and that is the required like in uh, forging operation in manufacturing. So, that forging like uh, in the drop forging when sudden uh, impact is essential to put. So, here the no noise will certainly be, uh, be coming and you cannot control that noise level at that particular moment of time when the uh, sudden impact is uh, going to put over the work piece in order to change its uh, uh, dimensions, size or shape with the help of the plastic deformation. So, for that plastic deformation of a particular work piece, it is essential that uh, you will uh, put an impact over that particular substrate or work piece uh, which you want to uh, uh, provide a desired size and shape. So, in that noise will come obviously and uh, uh, it is uh, it will be a uh, uh, ideal job of an engineer if you if you could reduce uh, if you could manage that noise level in the particular manufacturing industry especially for those work which essentially be having some sort of noise. So, uh, so engineering control uh, we have to think that uh, because uh, as we mentioned that there is a 
way to control noise on the administrative or engineering level. So, uh, engineering level is uh, much more convenient for uh, utilizing it for noise control in any industry. So, let us take uh, one example. So, before that uh, we covered this particular uh, thing that source path and receiver. So, so, this particular source path receiver viewpoint in the design of engineering controls for noise abatement. So, three reasons where noise can be reduced at the source, at the receiver and along the path of the uh, path between source and receiver. So, uh, there are situation in industry where uh, the noise is compulsorily uh, becoming. So, in that situation the worker is uh, continuously being exposed to that particular noise level. So, what could be the possible remedy in order to uh, uh, provide the better environment to those workers who are directly uh, exposing to that uh, <coughs> uh, noise level. So, in that context engineering uh, control engineering controls uh, at the receiver uh, means providing some ear protection for the worker uh, who is uh, constantly working in the noisy environment. So, the types of ear protection equipment may include ear plug may include ear muffs uh, it may also include helmets. So, uh, this particular ear plug is made up of pliable material that can be fitted into the auditory canal uh, that is outer uh, ear uh, passage to reduce the sound that reaches to the middle ear and inner ear mechanism. Ear muffs uh, cover uh, the complete outer ear to reduce noise and helmet uh, fits over the head and ears in some cases completely enclosing the head. So, ear plugs and ear muffs uh, are often combined to increase the production level over uh, either one alone. <coughs> so, all of these air production controls are considered less satisfactory than engineering controls at the source. So, like uh, I am giving you possible engineering controls at the source of noise, like uh, if you target uh, some machines or process and possible engineering control <coughs> at source. So, if uh, the noise uh, from fan and blowers are coming, so uh, engineering control may be the increase of size uh, of fan or blower so that it moves the same amount of fluid at lower rotational speed. So, this generally uh, it will reduce uh, noise output. If the sound is coming on the let us say vibrating, uh, vibrating machinery. So, uh, we have to provide better balancing of the components. Such noise often results from uh, generally imbalance of rotary uh, or rotating members. Impact equipment. such as stamping or forge hammers used in manufacturing industries. So, we have to move the equipment onto rubber mounts 
to reduce the transmission if possible. So, impact noise of this kind of equipment is often uh, partially transmitted through the floor of the plant. So, we need to take care of the base or floor of the plant and so the engineering measures need to uh, need to implement engineering, engineering uh, controls are necessary for any uh, manufacturing industries in order to reduce the noise level. So, with this I am uh, closing this lecture and then uh, as per our culture I am giving you uh, one line to think that if you were an automobile engineer which type of exhaustion system would you like to have in your design in order to reduce the noise while having an engine with a very high power. So, think about that there is a gravity for you enjoy and that is all for now we will be uh, dealing with the climatic control conditions and uh, that is uh, uh, affecting the work environment in the next lecture. Thank you.